Hi, Fertility Fam. It is I, Sanika. And first, I want to apologize. That has been so long since I've updated y'all. I can't believe that it's been, I don't know, eight weeks? Nine? Nine, maybe. I apologize for that. But I have to admit that my first trimester was horrible. It was hell, y'all. And I'm just going to zoom straight through it for y'all. Don't make this video long. So, uh, week four, I started spotting. Um, I had did my last HCG with my re. I also did a, a blood flow ultrasound. Waste of $400. Can't believe I paid $400. I thought it was going to be like a regular ultrasound. No, just a blood flow to the uterus. Whatever that means. Anyway, um, but that did that and... Um, week four, I was nauseated, I was sick, um, and I started spotting at four weeks and six days. And I spotted every day. And to my fifth week, I was spotting, and then all of a sudden, my, um, symptoms stopped. I had my last ACG with my re, it was 782, I believe. Um, after that... Uh, he told me to make an appointment with my OB. I made an appointment with my OB. My OB said he can't see me until I'm seven weeks. Made that appointment. Um, into my fifth week, I was still spotting every day. Um, then um, towards the end of the week, like five, five weeks and six days, I was just like cramping really, really bad. Especially on my left side. I didn't know what was going on. Told my husband we need to go to the ER. Went to the ER. And um, found out that I had uh, two subchronic hematomas. They saw the sac in the fetal pole in my uterus. I honestly thought it was like ectopic. And that fifth week, I also, all my symptoms had went away. Um, I can honestly say that the fifth week was the lowest point in my pregnancy. I honestly thought that it wasn't going to continue, it wasn't viable because one of my symptoms had stopped and I was spotting every single day y'all so um when they told me I had a subchronic they said there was no heartbeat just uh subchronic and that kind of um worried me because they hadn't seen they didn't see a heartbeat I know at five weeks and five days when I had the other sign with my daughter it was like her heartbeat was like 109 so for them not to have seen a heartbeat I honestly thought that something was wrong um when I called my OB and told them about my spotting, they had decided to do an ACG test on me. They did the ACG, ACG test, um, it was a Thursday, and, they, and he wanted to do it repeated again in 48 hours, but 48 hours would have been Saturday. And Saturday they were close, I had to wait till Monday. So that Thursday I went in for the test. Friday they called me with my results. My results they were uh, five thousand and eighty-seven, I think. And when I did the math from my last that I did about all, over a week ago, I felt like they should have been in the nine thousand range for normal pregnancy. So at that moment, when my symptoms had stopped, I knew that my pregnancy was over. I was in a, I just knew. It wasn't going to be viable or succeed. I was going to miscarriage at any moment. And then when the cramping had started over the weekend and I went to the um, ER and they told me about the subchronic hematoma and you know that the heartbeat wasn't there. And she even said, she said, you should expect a miscarriage. And I was like, I know. So uh, that Monday I had to go and repeat my ECG. I went in, got my blood work. Um... And when she called me back that evening to tell me what my number was, um, it was uh, 13,000 and something. And she was like, um, you know, it's gone up, but it's still not doubling like it's supposed to have. At that moment, I think it was supposed to be like 16 or 17,000, 17, 16 or 17,000. And it was only 13. So they were like, um, won't you come in tomorrow for an ultrasound and we can see um, exactly, you know, what's going on. So 
Monday night, I prayed and I told God what was in my heart. You know, I wanted this pregnancy, but if it wasn't meant to be, you know, I understand. God, I just want, you know, your will to be done and whatever it is, you just give me uh, peace. Maybe let me have peace with whatever happens. And then that night I had a dream that I had the baby and it was a girl. So that morning when I woke up, that morning when I woke up, all of a sudden I, I was feeling nauseous and I threw up. And I was like, uh, and I, didn't, I thought it was nerves because I knew I was going in and this was the moment I was going to find out if I was actually still pregnant. So I figured it was just nerves and I was thrown up and I felt nauseous and I was like, oh, something's going on. My, I started getting excessive saliva like I do. But again, I just figured it was nerves. At this, but at the same time, I felt like I was at peace with whatever was going to happen. But I kind of felt like it was going to go in a good way. But I was okay. I, I don't want. I was ready for whatever news that I was about to get. You know. So when she went in with transvaginal, with the ultrasound transvaginal, um, she couldn't see anything because she said it was too close up. Um, my uterus sits forward. So um, she said she's going to go ahead and do an abdominal ultrasound. And when she put it on my stomach, she was like, oh, there it is. And the heartbeat was a flickering away. Yep. Measuring six weeks and two days it was uh two days behind but the heartbeat was 111 and i was just like thank you jesus i was like thank you god i can't believe it's there i, I was just like whoo you know and um and every day after that i was sick <laughs> so be careful what you pray for <laughs> you know i was complaining of the fact that i wasn't having any symptoms like it all went away and then it just came back 10 times and it was like, you want, uh, maybe I was like, I'm trying to give you a symptom-free pregnancy, but it don't look like you're going to be happy. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you that sickness since that's what you're craving for. <laughs> it says that's what you need to let you know that you're still pregnant. And y'all, I had sickness every day after. I was uh, thrown up, I threw up three, four times a day. I was, uh, the excessive saliva was horrible. My mouth was just fill up with saliva and I'm not talking about like a little teaspoon. I mean like as if I took a, a whole gulp of, of water. It was just that bad. When I talked, um, you know, sometimes I'd be drooling because my mouth would fill up and I can't swallow it fast enough. And then sometimes if I did swallow, that's what made me gag and made me throw up. And then it was the fatigue. I was so tired. I mean it was an uncontrollable tire that I just didn't understand. My body was just like weak. And all I wanted to do was just lay in bed. And then at some point, I honestly believe that prenatal depression kicked in because I didn't want to be bothered with anybody. I didn't care about nothing. Um, all I wanted to do was just lay in my bed and watch TV. And if I wasn't doing that, then I was fighting sickness just to get by you know like because I, I still have a toddler that I have to take that I have to take care of so that was hard um especially with her having autism and you know um and my nerves was get bad quick I would I was agitated quicker um so it was pretty rough up until I still was spotting I spotted up until my 11th week and um and the depression it it got bad I didn't even wanna I didn't want to get dressed I just want to walk around in a t-shirt and panties or a big shirt if I had company and if I had company I just stayed in my room I didn't want to be bothered with my kids. I didn't want to be bothered with my husband. I didn't, want to, I didn't didn't want nothing but my pillow. That was like the only time I felt comfort is when I laid my head on my pillow and I was holding my pillow. That was the only time I felt comfort. Um, 
because I couldn't eat because I when I wanted to eat it's like I crave it and then when I get it I didn't want it and then I get mad because of that and then and if it wasn't me being mad I was crying about something every little thing made me cry I, it was just like so many emotions on top of emotion it was anger it was sadness it was happy it was just so much and then I just was overwhelmed um I didn't want to clean. I didn't want to do nothing. My house was nasty. I was really thinking about hiring somebody to come clean my house. Like, seriously. Um, and my kids would clean up, but it wasn't to my standards. So, to me, that it just wasn't clean. And it was, y'all, it was hard. I honestly can say this was the worst first trimester I had in any of my pregnancies. Um, and at the same time, even though I, um, I was feeling sick, it was... I, mean, I still had the doubt of eventually this was going to end. I don't know why. I kept thinking it. I don't know, maybe because I had a loss before, especially since I was under the 10 week. You know, when I had my, my first miscarriage at 10 weeks, I was waiting to get past that point to even enjoy my pregnancy. I felt like it can go further, you know? So at um, eight weeks, I bought a Doppler. And I heard the uh, I heard the baby at eight weeks six days. I heard it for like five seconds, <laughs> and then at nine weeks two days, I finally was able to catch it every time I went. And by that time, I was feeling the baby like I wasn't feeling like movement, but I could just feel placement because the baby sits very low, and. I can just feel it when it's balled up into a knot. And also, um, so in nine weeks, I also was diagnosed with gestational diabetes. I had to take the three-hour test. And my fasting came back normal. My one hour came back normal. My two hours, five points. And third hour, normal. So gestational diabetes. Got to prick my finger every four Days, which I knew because in my sixth week, I would wake up uh, with jitters, which is like I did with my last um, pregnancy. My sugar would get, I, I just felt, always felt like my sugar was low if I didn't eat and I wasn't eating because I was sick. So, um, I kind of knew gestational diabetes. I was going to actually talk to him that my next appointment, but he had scheduled it. Didn't even tell me. I just, I just got a text message saying, you got to come in for 840 AM for blood work. I was like, what? My appointment at 10. But, um, yeah. So, bought a Doppler, and I've heard the heartbeat every day. Um, ninth week, gestational diabetes. Um, towards the end of my 10th week is when I started feeling relief. I didn't wake up sick. <laughs> Mostly, my most thing was fatigue they he prescribed me um ugh. promote promethazine he prescribed me that which i need to refill but um he, he prescribed me that and um for the most part it worked to where i wasn't sick all day long well, like towards the ninth week i wasn't sick all day of vomiting six times a day probably vomit once or twice you know and um and then i was also taking b6 and unisom i still take that and i don't know if because i started combining both of them is the reason why i'm not sick anymore i taught i, I tested that theory out and didn't take either one of them last night and this morning i woke up sick so that's probably what it is. And I, I have a lot of excessive saliva today. So it's probably, I need to start back taking both of them again. Because I ran out of Unison. I bought some today though. Anyway, so um, I went and I've um, seen my, oh, I see my OB doctor every two weeks. And that's because I know a lot of y'all looking and seeing that I am wearing my oxygen, which if you've been following me since the beginning, y'all know that I do have pulmonary fibrosis and I am on oxygen, but I'm only on oxygen when I exert myself. Like if I'm walking or, you know, 
exert myself. So never really on it when I'm on my own here, but I've come to find out that even when I'm talking, my oxygen drops, which is not good for the baby. And therefore, I have to be on my oxygen 24-7. Um, my doctors aren't really concerned for me as if they like they were my last pregnancy. Because my last pregnancy went by with such a breeze, they're not really being as aggressive. At least my MFM is not. She's like, she said, you had such a good pregnancy last time. I don't, she's like, I'm, that's why I'm not, that's why she didn't want to see me every two weeks like she did last time. She said, man, you next time you come, 18 weeks, and then we'll see after that. So, she's not concerned. I'm not really concerned either. I, I believe God wouldn't have brought me this far just to, you know. Um, What else? went on this first trimester no i don't really think that i think the majority of it was just the vomiting the nausea the fatigue the depression um the emotional toll it took on me as far as my moodiness and my mood swings and i was happy i was crying i was mad it was so hard and the fact that I just didn't want to do anything I mean the depression hit me so hard y'all prenatal depression is real and it hit me hard I mean I already suffer from depression and I had to stop my depression medicine and my anxiety medicine so I was having anxiety attacks and and my MF friend told me that I can continue my Prozac if I wanted to but you know she was also, and now another doctor told me this too, that the children, that the baby does become dependent on it. And it goes through withdrawals for two weeks after you get off it. And I didn't want to put my child through that. I'd rather go through this than have my child go through withdrawals for Prozac, you know, for two weeks. And who knows what that withdrawal would be like? That probably would drive me insane. And I'm about to put myself or my child through that. So I'll just deal with it like I've been doing and um I do believe that that about sums up my two weeks I mean my first trimester I am 13 weeks and one day and I'll give y'all a little bump shot. Now, I can tell y'all that my MFM says when I, my last ultrasound at 12 weeks. It's the baby. The little head, the body, the legs, the arms. But she says that my uterus is to my belly button. Which is, you know, uterus don't usually get to the belly button until 20 weeks. And here I was 12 weeks and my, my uterus was already there. So, which is why I know now why, one, the baby sits very low, like low, <laughs> and um, two, can't suck it in anymore. So, this is baby at three months. Woo. I can say that towards the end of 10 weeks, I started feeling movement. Um, just like the little flutters, the little bubble feeling, and then around 12 weeks, I started feeling little jerks, little jabs, and I still I feel like, like I, feel, I can feel it like doing this, and sometimes I can even feel it kicking up towards my belly button. So, 13 weeks. And I feel movement. And yes, I know it's movement. I remember my last pregnancy, I was like 14, 15 weeks. And I was telling somebody that I was feeling movement. And it was like, it's too early to be feeling movement. Just because you didn't feel movement, that don't mean nothing. I felt it. And I feel it. I know what my baby feel like. And because they say every pregnancy, you know, the uterus thins out and it's, e and it's more for you. You can feel it easier. And the fact that my... Uterus is all the way to my belly button, which is the reason why I can feel it up there. <sighs> what else? So much. But I do believe that is it. At the end 
of this clip, if you have made it this far, you will know what the gender of the little grandpacker baby <laughs> is. So, I just want to thank y'all and definitely thank God that I made it this far. And I feel incredibly blessed to be able to become pregnant again. And I want y'all to know that I am praying for all. All of you out there that are still trying, and I'm so happy for those who have gotten their BFPs and had their rainbow babies, and it's just, it's a, it's truly a blessing, and prayer works 100%, 100%. You just got to keep the faith and keep believing. It'll happen for you. It happened for me. I just want to say... God bless.